So a deadlift, basically a hinge pattern. How do we get people to hinge more effectively and safely? The biggest thing I want you to remember when it comes to deadlifting from the floor, it is a pushing exercise. Stop thinking of it as a pulling movement. That's when it's gonna get us into the circular pattern. Get all the tension, everything's nice and tight, and you're going to push the floor away and squeeze your glutes. That whole concept of pushing the floor away, staying tight, staying stable, and standing up, it's gonna to lead to better results rather than you getting in these long patterns of pulling, dragging the bar up to our hips. So when it comes to pulling something, especially a deadlift, but even a row, I want you to have in your mind the thought of towing something. So if I'm a car, this bar is a trailer and there's a chain between the two, I'm not gonna just hit the gas and pull off. That's gonna rip the bumper off. I'm gonna slowly ease into it, pulling the slack out of the chain. And once there's a good bit amount of tension, I'm gonna ease into that tension and then I'm gonna go. I want you to think the same thing with this bar. Get tension on the bar, pull your shoulder blades back, Everything is rigid, so when you hit the gas, everything goes. This bar and the plate, actually there's a pretty different amount of space, so I can even feel the bar get to the top of the plates. So when I'm coaching and I'm listening to it and I'm telling that to the athletes as well, get the tension out of the bar, get the slack out of the bar, be as tense as possible, so when you hit the gas, everything is straight up. That hinge, remember we wanna break at the hips with a soft bend in the knee. And as we break in the hips, we're sliding back, feeling the tension in the hamstring. Even though a deadlift is programmed sometimes on a back day, remember it is a hamstring and glute at posterior dominant movement. The back is just involved. It is not the primary mover, nor do we want it to be. So as we break in the hips into that hinge and slide back, we're feeling that tension in the hamstrings. And then from there, we push through the floor and squeeze our glutes. I've had clients in the past put a wall up behind them and then put their hands on the front side of their legs and just slide back and touch the wall and they'll feel that tension in their hamstrings. Like, did you feel the hamstrings? Good, that's where we're at. Or maybe even if they're not connecting the dots there, I'll have them put a band around their waist and stand behind them or attach it to a rack and give them that little added resistance of pulling them into position and then they'll feel those hamstrings kick on. That's the hinge that we really want. Similar to a kettlebell swing, to a jumping squat, breaking in the hips, pulling the hips through. So the deadlift is a good opportunity for us to talk about the ribs and pelvis interaction. As we load down, I don't want you to open up like an accordion, get into this position, big long spine. You see this lower back getting into work here and then moving. Now I have this fluctuating movement of what's going on with this torso, with this canister. I want you to think trying to stack these as much as possible so when we hit the gas, our organs and all that pressure can push up against the front side of the spine and give us that stability. So now when I'm loading, I'm thinking backside, front side, pelvis ribs here, and then when I stand up, same concept. I'm not thinking wide, open. Think keep that canister and that torso stacked so as you load in, feel that tension through your feet, feel that tension in your hips, squeeze your glutes, keep those ribs where they're at, nice and tall. That active flexion prevents passive extension, but we don't want to be long here and see this lower back doing all this work. Keep the things underneath you, push. Get out of that concept of thinking, pull, the circular movement. Think, get everything tight, get all that tension, get all the slack out of the bar, all the slack out between your feet and the ground, feet, active toes, eight feet in front of us, shoulder blades back, go. So from the conventional deadlift setup, I really prefer a pronated hand grip, especially as we're warming up. I really feel like it helps us sit back in our heels and feel that posterior chain. But most importantly, it's gonna improve our grip, especially if you're working towards maybe Olympic lifting or some capacity. We really want to improve that grip. But as you get to the top end of your working sets, if your grip is a limiting factor, I'm completely okay with straps to kind of improve that grip or turning your hand into that supinated hand position. But what I don't like is when people default to that supinated hand position right out the gate. It's gonna put a lot of stress on only one of your biceps, and you might not notice it from an acute standpoint, but over a long term, you might notice your body twisting because your shoulders are turned. Here, I'm pretty square, but the second I turn my hand over, I'm kind of tucking this shoulder back. So if you are gonna turn that hand over, you really need to be cognizant of where your shoulder position is. 
When it comes to the athletes and clients that I work with, I really like coaching an eye position of eight feet out in front of us. I feel like by having that spot, not only does it give us a point of reference, but it also tries to keep that spine in that neutral position we talk about so much. So having our eyes eight feet in front of us, and then as we stand up, keeping them there, keeping us locked in, rather than having our eyes up, getting into that excess curvature of the cervical spine, and then when we move, you see people's eyes go up and now we're leaning back. Remember, we don't wanna make this a front to back movement, we wanna make it a pushing movement. So I'm pushing through the floor with my eyes staying there, and then I stand up and lock things out. But I want as minimal amount of movement in the head and the spine, the cervical spine especially, as we can get. So now actually picking the bar up from the floor. We're gonna go from the floor here, I'm going barefoot to minimize that distance that I have to travel. Remember, overhand grip, Eyes about eight feet in front of us, and I'm actively flexing the front side of my abs. I'm staying tight. I'm not just extending through my spine. Staying tight, I'm aware of this position. And remember, I'm pushing. I'm getting tight, creating feedback on the bar, creating tension on the bar. Shoulder blades down and back. Up, squeeze glutes. Descend back down. Tension on the bar. Up, squeeze glutes. 